What's up, everyone? YouTube says I'm live. It has an error message on it, so let me know if you can hear me. Technically, you should be able to hear me. Um, Jose, first in the chat. Then Justin. Aiden Holla. Addison, what is going on? All right. It's not showing me I'm live. Yeah, I'm still using it. Uh, it failed. Yeah, I can't do it to you right now. Max, you want to come say hi? See if we can see Paxton. He wants to say hi. Let's go with the big. Come, buddy. Say hi, everyone. Okay. Hi. hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Look, they're saying hi to you. They're writing hi. Hola. Yeah, yeah. good job. Hey. What do you want to teach them about water contamination today? You like to eat. Drink contaminated water. Say, so I get a lot of backwash in my drinks. Get a lot of floaties. All right, try this airdrop again. What's up, Robles? Ooh, who's Controla? The new new name. Oh, I wish that wouldn't show. Oh, well. I'm getting an airdrop. Oh, my son is breaking the green screen. I'm messing with the illusion. The studio is falling apart. We need the end of the school year to come so that I don't have to keep fixing this thing. Oh, Sahar says... Ah, uh, hi Paxton, Aiden, and Robles all throwing up the Oz. Addison throwing out an ah. Hi, bye. He's waving by, and I still can't see my live stream. Oh, here we go. There we go. I am finally able to see the stream. Ara says it's still Zane. Controller is Zane. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it, Zane. I got you. All right, folks, let's get learning. Um, so we are in our water systems unit. We are on lesson three. We finished the PO on Wednesday. Uh, oh, am I laggy? It appears to be laggy. Tell me if I'm lagging. Um, so every slide up until this slide should be complete, okay? And after today's lesson, you should be able to have this all finished. And this one should be all done from yesterday or from Wednesday, okay? So uh, I promised you an extra video. And so here it is. This is a crazy video. There you go, Zane, back to his regular account. So, this guy dropped his GoPro to the bottom of the Dead Sea. And so this is the floor of the Dead Sea. Uh, and as you can see, it is not sand. And it looks a lot like the, um, uh, the dress did. It says I'm lagging a lot. Or that's my kids are saying we're lagging too much. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Okay, let me try to solve that. Hmm. I 
don't know what to do. Is my audio lagging too? My source signal's looking a bit better. All right, Ara says my audio is fine. Justin says it's just the video. Aiden says audio is fine. Hmm. What if I turn off my picture for a bit? Okay, let's try the video a bit without my uh, camera on, and we'll see if the internet can catch up. So, the guy's at the Dead Sea. He drops his GoPro to the bottom of the Dead Sea. Remember, the Dead Sea... Let's flash back to our slide. The Dead Sea's salt content or salinity is 30%. So for this much water, for 100 milliliter of water, the same amount of water, okay, this is how much salt is in the Dead Sea compared to this one, okay? So he drops his GoPro at the bottom, and you, can, you can't just go down underwater and open your eyes and look, okay? You could literally ruin your eyes if you try to open them underwater at the Dead Sea. So he's trying to grab it with his toes, but have you ever been wearing um, a life jacket and tried to go down? Okay. It's, you just keep getting forced back to the top. And that's what it's like in the Dead Sea. So you can see them trying to use their toes to grab it. Now, if you think about this, if this was a normal body of water, you just dive down and grab it. But again, the Dead Sea is not normal. It's very, very different. You can't just dive down. Almost got it. So they tried pushing a guy down, but they failed. That's how buoyant this water is. Okay. So this guy finally gets it. But now look at all of their reactions. So there's actually signs on the surface or on the shore that say, do not put your head underwater. Because for this reason, look at their eyes and look how nobody can open them. Okay. So they started getting cramps. So they can't think about this when you come out of the water the first thing you do is wipe away the water okay but it's so salty right so it's just so incredibly salty you you can't wipe away your your water you can't do this Right? Think about needing to get to the, the towel and, and to clear off your face. It's like multiplied it by like eight um, or 
right? Considerable amount. All right. So uh, that's just the epicness of the Dead Sea. And this is why they called the Dead Sea, because no living things can be in that water. They can't survive. It's just too, too, uh, too much salt. All right, so we, we looked at these slides on Wednesday. Something's playing. Oh, what's this? Okay. So, concentration equals mass divided by the volume. Okay, the more salt, the more solidity it has. Okay. So as you saw those guys, as soon as they came to the surface, they just kicked back and they looked like they were laying down uh, because that's that's what it is. So how do you get rid of salt? Okay, so this is on your slide. Did I point at the right shoulder? Yeah, no, there you go. Okay, so here's this question. So this question says, describe the process of desalinization. Okay. So this is the process to remove salt from water. Why would that matter? Why do you need to do that? Um, let me know in the chat. Why would you need to remove salt from water? As this question says, why is it important to develop such techniques? Okay. So first you have to heat the water up to a point of boiling okay so we add heat okay so it's like so then what happens when you heat water okay so what happens is the water starts to evaporate okay just like you know in your whole life okay water evaporates it goes up up into this chamber okay it gets directed over here yeah Gary Sean in the chat says so we can drink it yeah so we can drink it so we can give it to animals so we can give it to ourselves okay so we can cook food in it yeah mayor I like that so you can use it for whatever you need to do okay so you heat it up the water evaporates okay but it's important to understand is that salt does not evaporate, okay? So the salt is just going to continue to sit at the bottom, okay? So the water evaporates. You can actually tell that water, some of this water has evaporated too. The water is way down. Okay, so the water evaporates. It gets stuck because it can't just leave. So it does get captured here. The condensation, okay, collects here. Okay, and then it starts cooling down, and when it cools down, it then reforms into water, and then it drips, and it's collected. Okay, so at the bottom, the salt starts to pool, and if you remember our po on the, the other day, when I before I stirred it, there was like this huge just clump of, of salt, and... Uh, so that's essentially what the bottom of this uh, beaker would look like. Yeah, Justin says it's not good for you if it's salty. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually dangerous for us to consume salt water. Uh, and we actually learned that in our cells unit, right? About how, remember how water will leave the cell and then the cell will shrink. Remember that? What was that called? Does anybody remember what that is called? Zane wants to know if you can use the salt from the sea. Uh, that's a little a little more complicated. Um, I can't really say yes or no. I don't, I'm not an expert on that field. Um, I would imagine that you couldn't just collect it, um, boil the water, get rid of it, and then pour that salt onto food. I think you would need to process it in some way. Um, but don't quote me on that, Zane. Good question. Uh, Meher says sea salt, uh, but again, I don't know if that's just raw salt. I, I think there's a process um, to uh, using that salt. Okay, so as I said, salt water is is boiled. Okay, the water particles evaporate. 
Okay, the water vapor is collected and cooled. Okay, and then it brings it, allows it to condense back into liquid water. Okay, so heated, evaporates, uh, water vapor collects, cools down, condenses, and we collect it. Okay, so if you were ever on Survivor, hey, oh, 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 or whatever, um, you would need to know if you, or any reason, you can't just drink water, okay, um, from from the, the the ocean or wherever body of water you're at. Okay, you would need to boil it and process it. Um, and uh, I think we do a poll later. I forget when. Uh, we will be doing a poll though to show you how to uh, to try this desalinization process. Desalination. Okay. So, uh, we are talking in this lesson, this lesson is called water contaminants, okay? And that word contaminants, you know that word, right? It's all about contaminating or contamination, right? So, um, what we're looking at are things that ruin, uh, dirty up or destroy our water, make it unsafe for us to con consume, okay? So, yeah, salt can be considered a contaminant. Okay, and if we look here, uh, we're going to talk about some chemical contaminants. Okay, we'll look at some natural ones too. So chemical contaminants are found in the air, and they are on the ground, and then they wash into our water system. Okay, and my image here uh, absolutely gives it away. What is this image? Uh, what am I looking at here? What is this? Uh, uh, this loader dumping in to this truck. Tell me in the chat. Okay, so this is something that uh, is very, very difficult for um, for cities and towns to manage. Uh, this need to keep the water system clean and pure. However, the need to keep our cities safe, okay? And so what this digger or this loader is loading into this dump truck uh, is salt, okay? And we use salt on our roads to, to melt ice and to keep our, our roads from being slippery. If we don't use the salt, okay, then our roads are icy and then people are getting accidents, okay? The problem is the salt can actually uh, hurt. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was going to cough. Uh, the salt can actually hurt our water systems because if you think about it, what's at the side of our roads? Let's, let me draw a road here. Okay, so we have our road. Okay, and at the, the edge we have the curb. Okay, you got your lines down the middle. Boop, boop. Okay, so there's two things that are essential on our roadways. You have these, these storm sewers. All right, so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, and so all of our roads are actually, uh, they're not actually perfectly flat. They're all tilted so that rainwater will run off and collect into our storm uh, management sewers. Okay, also on the sides here, depends on where you live, but you'll see a break in, in the curb for uh, water to run off. Okay, uh, in Durham we have a lot of these at the sides, and uh, by doing a good drawing, does this show you what we're looking at? Okay, and so this is where our storm water uh, drains off to. But if you think about it, when uh, when it rains or when it's when it's icy, if we're throwing salt down, what what happens to that salt? Where does it go? And the answer is. 
it washes just like our rainwater into our waste systems, okay, into our storm uh, management systems, okay. And these, these kind of blow my mind. These pretty much run right back to Lake Ontario, almost directly. Okay, they don't go through the crazy process that we learned last week. All right, so this is a bad, bad thing if you're thinking about it. We're introducing salt, like epic amounts, proportions of salt. This is not natural that we're introducing into Lake Ontario. Right, Lake Ontario is not a salt water uh, body of water. It is, um, it is natural and. We're introducing all this foreign salt into its uh, water system, okay? And remember, we then take that water and we consume it, okay? So, increased sal salinity in fresh water. What did I say, natural? I meant fresh. So, in fresh water is a serious problem for things that live, okay? Think about this, okay? There are fish, there are bodies, there are algae. Uh, there are things that live in our Lake Ontario, right? And the higher the salinity, they're not going to survive, okay? If you, if the things in our water, if the, the, the living organisms in our water aren't surviving, then that's breaking the chain, uh, and that's then going to start ruining our water system, okay? Uh, another contaminant is that's highly controversial for a number of reasons okay our fertilizers and uh, sprays that farmers have to put on their crops to keep them from uh, from dying keep them from being destroyed by birds and insects okay so uh, to help them grow better bigger f faster okay so fertilizers um, are often applied uh, but what, what happens is, let's do a cross section. Okay. So let's say this is the ground. Okay. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We talked about, oh my goodness. We talked about groundwater. Okay. And so we, we said, do I have brown? I don't think I have brown. Okay, so we said under the ground, there are various levels of, of water, of dirt, okay? And so when it rains, we talked about how water goes down. Okay, so rain comes and it soaks into here and it becomes groundwater. Okay, and you get deep enough where it's so saturated in okay, the water table and you can actually start to dig wells and get that. But when we start putting contaminants onto our crops, those contaminants also seep down into, into our water or groundwater into our systems. And so now we're contaminating our water systems. And eventually these water systems run off into our streams, which run into our lakes, which run into our oceans. Okay. So here's an important word for you. Um, if too much fertilizer makes its way down into the water table, uh, and then into our water systems, okay, we can have this very devastating, uh, thing called an algal bloom. Give it away. Here, turn this way. There it is. Okay. So if you're taking notes, which I hope you are, um, make sure you write that word down, algal bloom. Okay. And a picture kind of speaks a thousand words here. So let's, let's just show you the picture. Check this out. This is an algal bloom. Okay. So when, when we're putting all this fertilizer and it's getting into our water systems, okay, algae gets like this, like, ooh, yeah, right? And algae... Uh, in the water starts to to flourish and grow out of control okay and so what you're seeing here on the hand this is algae 
And what it does is it collects at the top of the water, right? And it, algae is the stuff that when you're swimming, you're like, I don't, want to, I don't want to do that, okay? And so when you look here, your first guess, how did this fish die? Okay, this is a dead fish. And so the, the answer is obviously here, is algal bloom has caused him to die. But what does algae do? Does it poison the fish? Okay, uh, well, it's not a poison issue. What it does is, think about this. Do you see how it has caked the surface here? Right, so, let's see if I can do this. So let's say algae starts to grow, okay? And it starts to collect, okay? And it starts to raise to the, to the top. Let's go with a bigger app. Right? So, you see how you have a little bit of shade on me now for my, my studio lights? And then the algae starts to get bigger and bigger. Okay? So now, hmm, here we go. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, so now what's happening is the light, the algae covers the fish and it raises to the top. Yes, Gary Sean. The fish can't breathe. The fish rely on the sunlight. Remember, what does sunlight do? Sunlight is, uh, feeds photosynthesis, right? And the ability for plants and, and things to breathe that the fish can uh, start to eat, okay? And so what it's doing, it's blocking sunlight and not allowing the other organisms that the fish rely on uh, to, to create what we, what we call oxygen, right? It takes carbon dioxide and it spews out oxygen. And so living in a body of water that is totally dark and blocked off from the sun, the organisms cannot survive and they cannot produce oxygen. The fish have the gills that open and close Okay, that take in that oxygen so that they can survive, or as Gary Sean says, breathe. And so when algae bloom happens, right, from our excess of um, fertilizers into our water systems, we can create these unnatural algal blooms that block sunlight and stop the organisms from creating oxygen. And so the fish and other living beings in the water system start to die. And not just the fish, but other things. Okay, so here's how, here's it in writing. Okay, so algae co controls, uh, grows uncontrollably, it blocks the sunlight, and uses up the oxygen in the system. Okay. Okay, so what were we talking about before? We were talking about chemical contaminants. Okay, so we have herbicides. We also have pesticides, right? So uh, we that before we talked about um, the fertilizer portion of it, and now we can look at uh, pesticides, right? So the word pest. Right? So these are chemicals that we introduce to keep unwanted species or pests out, okay? And uh, we, will, we will apply these to our plants in a bunch, a bunch of different ways, often like this, what you're seeing in the spray form, um, but we also can, uh, can find farmers, they spray it using um, airplanes, okay? Because it's the fastest way to cover the whole crop, okay? But um, again, this has to be uh, policed. This has to be monitored and maintained. There has to be people like you guys who care about the environment, who care about our water systems. Let's turn our lights back on. Need that oxygen. Okay. There has to be people saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't just go buck wild spraying whatever you want. Okay. Because when these herbicides and pesticides get into our water system, 
These are designed to kill, all right? These are designed to get rid of the bugs, okay? So think about what it's designed to do and then what happens when it's put into our, uh, into our waterways. So this is a very important term, okay? And it's biomagnify. And so what this means, okay, is these herbicides and pesticides act at a biological, at a very microscopic level, okay? What does that have to do with me? How does that impact me? Big whoop, okay? But what happens is we have like a chain, right? Something small eats something that's smaller. And something that's a little bit bigger eats that small thing, the, the small thing. And here's a better uh, image of it, okay? So we just talked about algal bloom, right? So this is microscopic. You can't see algae in the water uh, until it, it blooms, okay? But in the water, zooplankton consume algae. Okay? Small fish rely on eating the zooplankton. Well, squids rely on eating small fish. And sharks rely on eating squids. Okay? Now think about this. If the herbicides, before we were talking about algae as a problem, right, when, when it's in excess because of our fertilizers, well, if, if we kill off of our algae, okay, then zooplankton can't eat. If zooplankton can't eat, they die. Then there's no food for the fish to eat. So then they die, which means nothing for the squid. So they die. And that means there's nothing for the shark. So this, this food chain, and you better believe that we are included in that food chain. Okay, we are affected. Okay. So the effects of pesticides in our water system has uh, a biomagnified effect on us. So think of the word magnified. So it's a small impact, but by the, the food chain, it actually magnifies its impact to a to the point where actually it will start impacting us, okay? So, uh, organisms that are higher up the food chain uh, can have enough contaminant, okay? Uh, so, let's say they don't die. Let's say that algae is impacted by the pesticides. It doesn't die but it's carrying that poison, and then zooplankton eats that. Well, now zooplankton is magnifying that poison. And now the fish, let's say they didn't die, they've been consuming the zooplankton that is poisoned, 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 will eventually be poisoned. Okay? Uh, so an example is that um, they, they noticed that eagles were starting to have weaker shells, right, when they laid their eggs for their babies, okay, and so the babies weren't making it, okay, so eagles were getting into, uh, um, becoming endangered, right, because they weren't able to reproduce because their shells were weakened because of this biomagnified impact of things that we were doing to our, our water system. Okay. Uh, from from things that we're doing, the mercury levels in our Great Lakes, okay, uh, they're affecting the fish, and we're eating those fish. We're fishing these fish that we have poisoned. Okay. So that, that was chemical contaminants. Here it looks at biological, okay, that come from living sources. They can also enter a living uh, a water system, okay. So manure, right, cow poo, okay. Uh, manure is full of parasites, okay. There's that word there, okay. When parasites enter into the water system, same issue. We can biomagnify parasites and pass it along the food chain. And so we're eventually getting ourselves into uh, danger with parasites. Okay. Uh, e. coli. 
or E. coli. Okay, very dangerous. Uh, the campground that I actually grew up in, uh, I grew up swimming in, no one's allowed to swim there anymore. Okay, the waterway has been ruined with E. coli. Uh, and I remember there was a couple of years when I was a teen when we would go, and it was, we always had to check the E. coli levels before we were allowed to swim. And now it's just at a point where you're not allowed to swim in it at all. We used to rip up and down in it with uh, uh, canoes. Uh, my buddy uh, was lucky. He got like one of those tin boats. So we'd go, uh, somebody had a paddle, uh, pedal board or pedal boat. Um, but now we're not allowed in it. Now it's just look at it. It's pretty. Uh, and it smells a lot now. Okay. So uh, issues that you can get really sick. You can have nausea, you can have diarrhea, right? Because these are parasites. These are things that are not meant to be uh, introduced into our system, okay? And so think about it. If I can't swim in this water system, what do you think the impact of everything in that lives under the water there, okay? Bad. And that's why this lesson is called water contaminants, right? So these are biological contaminants. So... Um, yeah, we'll chop it there. I think we're good. Lots of words here uh, to add to the word wall. Add it to the word wall. Word wall! Salinity, concentration, desalination, chemical contaminants, algal bloom, biomagnify, and, uh, or, yeah, and biological contaminants. And this one, try saying that. Everybody try saying it. Dichlorodiphenyltrichlorothane. Pretty good, almost. And uh, <laughs> you're probably wondering, Mr. Stab, when did you use that word in the lesson? There's a hair that is in my eye and it's bugging me. Uh, I didn't use this word, but what we did put on the screen was its short form. So D for die, meaning two. You'll get into this in, in uh, high school science. Okay, another dye. And then try. So looking, looking toward uh, high school science. So dye meaning two. So two chloros. Okay. And then you'll get into what that actually is a short form for. And then fena. So two, two of these, two of these, and then try me three of chloroethane. Breaking that word down. So the question is, when did I use that? And it was on which slide? Here we go. When we talked about the eagles. So there's the DDT. They cause shell weakness for eagles. So you actually don't need to know that word, but I just added in there just so you could be like, whoa, look at that word. Okay. So you should now be able to explain why people can float in the Dead Sea. You should be able to explain the desalinization, especially with the picture here. Okay. Uh, you should be able to go to the water cycle and figure out where in our water cycle, I think we have a water cycle earlier. Yeah. Oh. So based on what we just discussed, where can chemical contaminants enter into our water systems? Okay. Uh, think about this, right? What we talked about on farms. Where can water, uh, where can things get into our water systems? So you have the runoff into the streams, you have from groundwater. Okay, so we talked about all of that. That's all covered. So you have what you need to be successful. All right. Any questions? Chat was quiet today. I honestly, guys, I had a blast on Wednesday. Uh, it really, you guys were interacting so much. I, I felt like you were here. And uh, I don't know, just good times. 
So I'll just stick around. If you have any questions, things to know, uh, next week is going to look different. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to look like yet. Uh, we are filming uh, for grad next week. So uh, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, we are. Um, I'm going to be at the school and not readily at my computer. So either I will let you know and either just cancel Wednesday's lesson, okay, or uh, I'll pre-record something, but it's more likely that I'll just just cancel it uh, or give you something to do uh, in place of, of being here, okay? Um, and then depends on what happens on Wednesday will depend on what I do on Friday, okay? Uh, my math guys, uh, I might have to... Uh, so math is a little bit interesting for next week. Sorry, uh, Miss Vision Ratham's class. Uh, this will be boring for you. But uh, for my class, the plan for next week and the week after is to look and, and give you some samples from high school. Okay. And so we're going to do some high school math. Um, and you're going to, what I want to do is I don't want to teach on it. I want to give it to you and then let you try it out and see what you can do, what you can't do. And then maybe uh, do a, a lesson or something a little bit later in the week. So uh, that'll all kind of be fleshed out over this weekend. Uh, right now, the reason I'm not sure is I'm waiting to hear back from Pickering High, it's math department. Uh, I have math from other high schools, but I've been trying to see if I can get some specifics from your Pickering High math department. Okay, so if not, we'll go with what I have. Uh, it is it is difficult. So what I do, I have samples from applied math and I have samples from academic math. Um, so I don't know what uh, Ms. Oikawa is doing right now. So Ms. Vigil Ratnam's class, if you're still listening, if you're still watching, if you, um, if you want to try it, absolutely. Um, it's, it's not based on what I taught this year. It's based off of what high school hopes that you know. Okay, so uh, I have uh, a whole page from the applied math course, and I have a page from the academic uh, course. Okay, questions that you can use a calculator for and questions that you can't use a calculator for. So it's good practice. Uh, looking at the chat, Aiden's asked something, so let me read it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, let's talk about uh, grad. We are still missing a number of you. Um, you haven't submitted your, your quotes or your baby pictures. Um, here's what I'm going to tell you. I really think that we're going to have a high quality uh, grad. I think it's going to look cool. It's going to sound cool. It's, it's not going to look like any other schools in the DDSPs. Um, I think a lot of the schools are going to be like, oh, that was way better than what we did. Okay. And I think you will be proud of your grad. Okay. I think that some of you at this point might be saying, uh, who cares? It's just an online grad. But then when it rolls out, you're going to be like, oh, I wish I was a part of that. Okay. So no matter what you're feeling right now about grad, I would, I would encourage you to get your stuff in. Um, we're trying, Mr. McKinnon and I spent some serious time on the phone. If you're trying to figure out how we can make this live stream interactive, make it fun, uh, see if we can have some, uh, some formality, but some, some laughter and some jokes in it, uh, have some, you guys playing along, us being able to interact both on the live stream, but also, uh, in the, the live watch party. So, uh, make sure you get that in, uh, Aiden said, picking the quotes, was really stressful. And it's always stressful because it matters to you, Aiden. Um, this is my quote, be awesome today. Uh, some people quoted themselves. Uh, some people quoted posters from the library. Loved it. Gary Shaw, you know who I'm talking to. I loved it. I love the quotes that I'm reading. I'm scrolling through them. I'm like, yes. Someone quoted LeBron James. Um, just uh, super cool to read and I can't wait where I'm able to put it together, edit it, video edit it, and uh, present it to you guys in a, in a really uh, beautiful way. 
So make sure you get that done. Uh, Aiden wants to know what program am I using for video? Uh, are you asking me, Aiden? Time out. The lesson's over, so if you're bored, you can peace out. See you later. Um, if you're wanting to know, so for uh, for these live lessons, I'm using OBS, which I showed you the other day. This is what your uh, video gamers use when they stream. And so it's just another way of stacking things and making and then sending it to uh, YouTube. If you're asking what I'm using for um, for our grad ceremony, I'm using Final Cut Pro. There it is, it's popping up. Uh, Final Cut Pro X is the newest version of Final Cut Pro. Uh, it's about a $400 video editing software. Uh, it's top of the line. And um, so I'm able to do some really, really powerful things. Um, I, oh, it's, it's loading right now, uh, but I'm able to stack text and, and animate things and make it look super cool. Is that what your question was, Aiden? So, uh, it's not going to be your iMovie, uh, cheap homemade video. It's going to be professional. It's going to look good. It's going to sound good. I'm going to use, uh, copyright free scores and stuff. Um, so it's going to look like you're watching um, something legit. Okay. So, so Aiden, Aiden says, yeah, what are, what am I using for the grad video? So I'll show you a timeline that I, from a project I've been working on. Again, the actual lesson is over. If this bores you, then I'm sorry. So when, um, when OBS is open and when I'm streaming, my computer really lags and really kind of slows down. And so this is such a demanding program. So here's, You'll notice if you've ever used iMovie, it looks very similar. So what Final Cut Pro is, is it's like iMovie, but like super jacked up, like next level. So let's send that away. And so our, our video, our grad program will look like this. This is a timeline of things that are running. I will have uh, I'll have things overlaid on the screen. And so this is all things that are stacked. So I have a video and, and clips and uh, yeah, so you can see I can have tons of things all over the screen. I can have text. So it will be legit. So make sure uh, so Mayhers asking, I spent three hundred dollars on Final Cut. Uh, actually, it was a gift. Um, my mom saw that I was loving iMovie and enjoying making videos, and so uh, she put my birthday gift and my Christmas gift together. Uh, in two thousand fourteen, I had to find out my license date. So, uh, two thousand fourteen, she bought me uh, a combined gift. She got me Final Cut Pro, and uh, it's, it's for me, it's been a worthy investment. I use it a ton. Um, if you guys aren't video editing heavy, I would use Wii Video, which is what the board pays for. You guys have about half a terabyte, so about 500 gigs of free storage online. Yes, yes, so Aiden is good software. It is legit. Um, I'm even right now shopping and looking at some templates that I can buy to make it, like, look like whoo, like a huge um, we are we are messaging as a staff trying to figure out how we can look legit um, but also present it to you in a professional way and that you will you'll be proud to show your family and for years to be like uh, this was my great eight grad Anaya just showed up where you going Anaya 
We can start the whole lesson again, though. I'm sure everybody would love that. So, I don't know. There's still 20 of you here. So you either are interested or you just walked away from your computer and you're just letting it play. Uh, any other questions? Happy to take questions. Ooh, okay, so um, Mayher is asking or saying that Final Cut Pro is a one-time purchase. Yes, so if you know anything about um, video editing, there's, there's two of the highest level video editors. So Adobe Premiere, you've heard of Adobe Photoshop, right? So the Adobe Premiere is the, like, the highest video editing software. And that's available Mac or PC. Final Cut Pro is like right there. Some people think it's better. Some people think it's not. Um, it's uh, It really just depends on what you need and what you're comfortable with. Uh, Final Cut Pro is different that Adobe you have to pay monthly for and Final Cut Pro is a one-time purchase. You buy it once. Uh, now, if some of you are looking to video editing, I know like Aaron, you're really good at video editing. Um, a lot of people are switching from Premiere and Final Cut to, uh, to DaVinci Resolve. Look that up. It's a free video editing software that actually competes with both Final Cut and um, Adobe Premiere. So you can check that out. Um, Mayher is asking about After Effects. After Effects is also done by um, Adobe. And that's also a paid thing. After Effects is when you watch things, it's like words are animated or like things are flying on and off the screen. Those are made in After Effects. So Apple's version is called Motion. So Motion uh, is the After Effects, uh, is Apple's version of After Effects. So um, I, I actually don't know how to use motion yet. I really want to learn. I want to learn how to animate things and make uh, text move. This is what it looks like. Uh, if any of you do have a Mac, okay, and you want to get into this stuff, okay, I'll tell you right now that Final Cut Pro, okay, is about four hundred dollars, okay, Canadian. Uh, motion is about hundred dollars Canadian. Okay, um, Logic, so Final Cut Pro is like iMovie on steroids, okay, uh, there is no free version of Motion, uh, Logic is professional um, sound and like, basically it's the professional version of GarageBand, uh, Logic is $300 Canadian, okay, all of these, uh, there's another one, Main Stage and Compressor. Uh, all of these apps, if you are looking to buy, as a student and as a teacher, we get a special discount. We can get all of these apps for a total of like $700. We can get it for $300, okay, one bundle. Okay, so if you do want to know about that, you can ask me, okay. I can't tell you how to use Motion yet. I can talk to you about using Final Cut. Uh, I've been doing a lot of video editing while we are off. So, Mayher says that he can't run DaVinci Resolve. Uh, oh, Aiden, you use Resolve? Nice. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about Resolve, and uh, a lot of people who use Adobe are switching to Resolve because they're tired of paying monthly fees for uh, Adobe. And you know me, I can't afford that stuff. So, uh, yeah, my mom bought me this, this combo pack and uh, $700 value. 300 so uh, it's a worthy investment if you have a, a Mac computer then I would get that bundle because the Adobe is quite expensive when you pay monthly I think it works out to be 150 to 200 dollars a year uh, to keep Adobe now you also do have a, a student version of that I don't know much about it but look into that if you're looking to buy so yes uh, Aiden I assure you that uh, I will do you proud with your grad. It will not be. It will not be done on PowerPoint. It will not be done on Google Slides. Uh, I, I made sure of that. Um, it's, it will look cool. It will be epic. 
And the more you guys are involved, the more fun it is. Okay. Uh, Mayher, yes, most of these things have free trials, especially during COVID. Uh, all of these programs are, I think they boosted them to a 90 day free trial. So you can grab those uh, free. I know Logic you can use for free. Final Cut Pro you can use for free for 90 days. Um, 90 days is a long time, it's three months. So uh, <laughs> I, uh, I got into Logic through a free trial, just like that. So, so yeah. If you um, if you're interested in this stuff, definitely get into it. <laughs> My final cut pro quit. That's quite weird. Just because OBS demands so much of the computer. So uh, OBS is cool. This is me. Oops. See, so I can move me anywhere. I'm flying. And so when you guys watch my my channel, all you're seeing is this is my my FaceTime camera at the top of my my computer. This is my, you guys know in my classroom I have three screens. So this is my big middle screen. Okay, and then this one is half of my, my side screen. That's on my right hand side. I brought it all home. So, and then OBS, this window that you never actually see normally. That I run that right off of my laptop screen. So I have a three screen setup. So, yeah, I got a little studio going on in here. And it's all homemade and it will all go, it all collapse once COVID is done and I get to go back to work. So, so if that's it, I will say goodbye. Um, it looks like there are people signed up for guided. So if you want to join us, bit.ly slash stav online guided. Uh, I'll be going on live and immediately right after this. Uh, answer some questions. Um, yeah. Whatever they want to talk about. You guys are in charge of God. I'm just there to uh, answer questions. If you have grad questions, uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but I got to sign off here so that I can go see my friends at Guided. All right, so I'll see you there. Peace out. Thanks for asking the questions, Aiden. Thanks for caring. Mayher, Nathaniel. <laughs> Mayher, I am a full-fledged editor now. I am. I am. I've been actually, like a little side gig, been editing about 20 hours a week. So, I've been grinding it. So, I've been producing a lot of content. So, see you guys. Peace out.